Hello guys, I'm back talking about ships again. This is going to be a new series I'm going to be doing where we're going to talk about ships, the worst and the best ships around this price range of 100 or less, then 200 or less, and then 300 or less, between the 101 to 200 mark, obviously. And of course, this is going to be on the current patch, so it's not going to be a ship when it gets released. Of course, all these ships are going to be changing. The best ships that I shout out now might become the worst ships and the worst ships that I shout out now could become the best ships. So the first video we're going to be talking about is obviously about ships from $100 or less. So it can be on $100 exactly or it has to be less than $100. It's simple, simple as that. So with these videos there's going to be a criteria that these ships are going to be hitting to determine if they're the worst or best ships that go on the video. So the first criteria is the price. Is this ship good good value? Is it not a lot of money to buy the ship? You're getting a lot of ship for not a lot. Or is it overpriced? So is the ship overpriced? Are you not getting a lot of ship for what you're buying for, for example? And obviously this is going to be in Star Citizen terms. This is not going to be your everyday game. This is in Star Citizen. Over $100 is fucking too much for a game in my opinion. But hey, this is, this is what we got. So the second criteria is role and meta. So by role, what I mean is, is this ship a cargo ship or is this ship a dog fighting ship? But with meta, what I'm talking about is, is this role that the ship has, is it really good at making money? Is it really bad at making money? Or is it really good at progressing through the game to get what, what you want in the game? Maybe a ship, maybe whatever, you know? That's what I mean by meta. So is it really good? So for example, is delivery missions a good way to get money? Is cargo a good way to get money? Is mining a good way to get money for example that's what i'm trying to talk about when it comes to meta so the last criteria is very easy is the competition does this ship have any other com competitors around its price range is this competitor cheaper is it more expensive is it better or is it worse very simple because this is my first video on the series the criteria is probably going to be up for debate and i will say right now if you want to put your own criteria in the video or you think that one of these criteria should be taken out Please put in in the comments below because I would add this criteria and I think this will develop the series and the ships will be more fair and be less controversial because there'll be more criteria to explain why the ships in the worst and why the ships in the best. So I'm going to start with the worst ships and then I'm going to move on to the best ships. So my first ship is going to be the mo most controversial ship and that's going to be the Mustang Alpha. Yes, I'm putting the Mustang Alpha in here. The fight between the Aurora fans and the Mustang Alpha fans. It's, it, it's all, all going to be in this video. No, it's not. Okay. Why do I put the Mustang Alpha? So when it comes to the criteria, let's look at the criteria. So the price is obviously going to be fine. I think the Mustang Alpha uh, price is okay. It's the starting ship. It's the first ship you're going to buy. You get the game when the, if you get it with a game package. So what's wrong with price? There's nothing wrong with price. I think when it comes to the role and the meta is really where it's going to be lacking. So when it comes to the meta right now, the Mustang to me doesn't compete with the Aurora. So that's the other criteria to compete. But the meta I think is the big criteria that really is what's bringing the Mustang down the peg. And that's because the Aurora can do delivery missions when the Mustang can't. What I mean by this is the meta for starting ships is to go in and get the delivery missions to get as much money, either rent out something like a prospector, to get more money that way or to straight up buy the ship what you want or you know buy the ship to make more money to buy a prospect for example and you can't do that with a mustang but with the aurora you can do this and because the meta really signals to delivery missions because it's safe very quick to get money and it gives a lot of payout so 15k payout is a lot of money for a starting ship what a starting ship can do and you can do i think people say it in an hour they got to 100k so if you're really good at doing the delivery missions, and not only this, the delivery missions are getting a bit more um, taste, I guess, but getting better taste. What the hell? Getting better in 3.10. I think delivery missions is where a lot of people are going to want to be doing in the game right now, and that really doesn't show really good signs for the Mustang right now. Obviously, maybe in a year's time, this might change. The meta might change for new ships, and the Mustang might not be as bad or isn't in this category anymore. But right now, delivery missions, I feel, are just so good to get money. And I believe that when you're in a starting ship, you don't want to be stuck in the starting ship right now. You want to get out of the starting ship and get a prospect there. 
or get a Cutlass Black or whatever you you want to target and getting out the starting ships right now as quick as possible is what people are doing. So I feel the fact that the Mustang can't do delivery missions and the fact that it's stuck at doing combat and really is it at the best combat ship especially around this price range? No, not really. I don't even... Yeah, it's probably better than Aurora, but it doesn't make it a really good combat ship. When I'm always against them, these things just die really quickly. I even... Even the Mustang Delta dies pretty quickly. Yeah, the Mustang Delta's got a lot of firepower, but we're talking about the Mustang Alpha mostly here. Mainly here, sorry. And the Mustang Alpha is... It, it doesn't have a lot of shields. It doesn't have too much firepower. Probably better than the Aurora when it comes to the default firepower. But... To me, a lot the meta right now is delivery missions, get as much money to get out of these start, starting ships to get into a rental or to get into the ship that you want. And the Mustang, I think is going to be the worst at doing this when it competes with the Aurora. Now the next worst ship is going to be the MPVU and I guess both variants in this time. And the reason why is very simple, it's because it needs the Idris. The Idris is the reason why the ship is here I believe and it's not in the game. I think this is very simple. It's not in the game, so it's not really that this ship doesn't really fit in the game that well because the Idris is not in the game. And I think this is very simple. Can it do delivery missions? I believe it can. I believe you can actually get in the back, but other ships do it way better. Why would you buy this ship for delivery missions when you've got an Aurora that could probably do it better and can defend itself? So really, I don't think this ship. The problem with this ship, it doesn't fit in the game right now. It's defenseless. It. I don't think it has like. A lot of quantum fuel even if it has a quantum drive i'm not even sure on this one i don't see a lot of people flying it because i think of this reason of well why there's other ships that do what this thing can do right now in the game a lot better and so i really put i'm putting the mpvu here on the worst ships hopefully when the idris comes out this ship will start being good maybe you guys put your own opinions on this ship and what you think do you own a ship because of the idris or do you own a ship because your group is in or your org isn't has an idris i don't know that's the reason why i'm putting the mpvu as the worst ship or in the worst ship category so let's get on to the best ships and of course it's going to i think these are going to be two obvious best ships the first one's going to be the avenger titan i mean come on this ship is so good uh, for the price 50 quid on its own and I've 70 quid when it comes to I think 72 dollars actually when it comes to packaging with the game and if someone actually told me okay Luke I want to start playing the game right now I want to buy a starter pack should I buy the Aurora or should I buy the Mustang and I'm gonna go well if you want to buy the Aurora or the Mustang if you don't mind spending a little bit extra just buy the Titan it's kind of like a better Mustang when it comes to combat and it's like a Aurora that can do delivery missions and have cargo in it as well. So I feel like this ship can actually have a very multi role when it comes to its meta. Is this meta going to be combat focused? This ship can do it. The default layout on this ship is actually really good. That huge chain gun destroys. I had this ship back in the days when I had the game package and I just used this ship to do my combat missions because it was actually just really good. Better than other ships that were even over than $100 than I had at the time. So this ship's very good when it comes to combat, but when it comes to the meta, and that's being delivery missions, it can do that as well. I mean, it has a huge bay door that can come down, and you can do the um, delivery missions, and you can do a lot of them. You're not, like, trying to scram for the box you need when it comes to the Aurora. This, you can put your boxes, you've got a lot more space for the boxes. It has a bed, so you can log out right now. That does work, I know. Amazing. So the beds work, and you can log out in this um, ship, so that is another plus. Can it do cargo? Yes, it can do cargo. Not a lot, but it's a starting thing to make you like feel. Actually, I quite like cargo. I start doing cargo, so it can do this. It can do a lot of stuff in the game. It's this multi-roll kind of ship, and I think the multi-roll ships for people who just want to buy one ship and don't want to invest 200, 300 quid in the game, or up to a thousand quid for the concierge. I think a ship that does a lot of things is going to be very good. And guess what? The ship does a lot of things so i can't really complain about the ship i think this ship is absolutely great ship and i think if you're a new player and you want to upgrade your aurora or your mustang or you're thinking about getting a game and you don't mind spending a little bit more i think the avenger titan is is one of the best ships in the game period so that's why it's on this list so if the avenger titan is going to if my opinion one of the best ships in the game i'm going to say that this ship 
is the best ship in the game, in my opinion, obviously. And that's going to be the Cutlass Black. So what does the Cutlass Black have when it comes to the criteria and when it comes to what it can do? So with the criteria, it's price. $100. Quite a lot in real life terms, but in Star Citizen terms, this is quite cheap. I know. Saying a $100 ship is quite cheap is very insane, in my opinion, but that's just how it is right now when it comes to Star Citizen. So the price of the ship is quite cheap. Obviously, what you what are you getting with that ship? Well, you're getting a multi-crew ship. You're getting a multi-role ship that can basically do everything other than mining. The multi-crew can, you have turrets, you have a cockpit. You can even put in a cyclone or a couple of bikes in there with your mates, making it kind of an exploration ship. And it has big doors where you can have, you can piss about and have the sandbox experience. Like, um, what was I saying? like a drop ship, sorry. So it, kind of like a drop ship. So it's got these, so it could do basically delivery, delivery missions, what's the meta? To get in money, to get in what you want. It can do cargo, it can do combat. It can have, you can have fun with your friends as well. So for a hundred dollars, you're getting a lot of ship, well not a lot of money, essentially. And really, what ship are you going to upgrade this from? So if you want a ship that is very good at multi-roll, that can do every, everything else other than mining, essentially that's what a multi-roll ship kind of is right now. Um, to have as much fun in the multi-crew section with your mates. There's not that many ships. A freelancer, but I think the freelancer is slightly worse when it comes to the combat and it's very cargo cargo based. So really, other than that, we we're talking about maybe the Mercury Star Runner when that comes out, but well, that's not even out yet. And that's 200, I think that's 215 or $225. So to get probably nearly as a similar experience, you'll get, you have to pay an extra 115 or $125 to get a similar experience that this ship can have. And I think this is why this is the best ship when it comes to the price, when it comes to the value and what it can do. And of course it can do the meta because it can do the meta and more essentially. So maybe you guys don't have a different opinion of this. Maybe there's other ships out there you think maybe you should take this spot of the Cutlass Black. But I would put the Cutlass Black as the best ship in my opinion. And it's why it's in the best ship category of $100 and less. So this is my video on the worst and best ships in the game. $100 or less. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, do all that stuff. All that stuff to improve my channel, like liking it, subscribing it, maybe disliking it because I talk a load of shit. Or you put or you didn't like me putting a Mustang Alpha. I think that's probably got a lot of dislikes this video because of that. So yeah, if all that stuff that helps me out. I've been off for a week and then I thought I'll take a week of making notes. Trying to make this video and kind of bring up thoughts on how I'm going to do this video and edit this video. I think this is where I'm going to go right now with my channel. Is where it might be less less uploads now, unfortunately, guys. But hopefully, the editing department's going to be uh, better visualized, and hopefully, my notes are going to be better to talk. I don't know. So yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, goodbye.